What's up guys, Dave Nader 1212 and it's list day. Ah oh, yes, list day. And your boy Dave is back with them shitty cards. Recently, Konami released our new favorite way to play dual monsters, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels. Real Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a, a, bit of a, a bit of a problem here because of the ongoing uh, issues. So it is nice that we now have an officially supported way to play real Yu-Gi-Oh! as opposed to Duel Links, which is a small truncated version of the game. Granted, it's not quite the same format as what we are currently in with uh, physical paper cards, but it is actually a full set of advanced format gaming. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! And with Master Duels, getting into the game is probably far easier than it has ever been. No longer do you need to go out and buy a bunch of cards where you don't even know where to start. So a bunch of old school players, seeing that this is now in the App Store, might want to give it a shot. Because the one thing about like Dueling Book and EDO Pro and Omega and all those things are, those are tools for the competitive player base and are really only known to said player base. So an officially supported game is going to have a lot better reach so other players from outside the community are gonna get to play our beautiful, beautiful convoluted game. So we're gonna be looking at the top 10 scrub cards you might see in Master Duels. Coming back to the game is difficult. And if you're one of those, I just found this on the App Store players and haven't played in 10, 15 years or whatever it is, um, you might wanna throw in a bunch of crap you remember that existed. Spoiler alert, it's all bad now. So let's take a peek at the 10 cards you might be wrongfully inclined to stick in your deck. Number 10, Dark Bribe. I feel like half this list is just gonna be top 10 cards DZ has made a video about saying that it's bad. Dark Bribe has pretty much become synonymous with scrubs in Yu-Gi-Oh. Dark Bribe is a classic counter trap card that says when your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can negate that activation, destroy it, but then your opponent draws one card. Okay, so. On the surface level, you might be saying, your scrub self, if I want to negate opponent's spell or trap, I want to play that one. What one? That one. But little do you know, you should be playing this one. I, that one. The problem with Dark Bribe is that it gives your opponent a card, a free card, a free draw. There's something in modern Yu-Gi-Oh we like to refer to as a card advantage, basically weighing the amount of cards you use to make a play versus the amount of cards you end up with at the end of your play versus the number of cards your opponent controls. So by using Dark Bribe and negating your opponent's card, that is a one for one, where your one card stopped their one card. But then they get a free card, meaning they made out like a bandit in this exchange. They're in a better spot now than you were when before you played your card. Dark Bribe can be useful. It's an, it's an omni negate for spells and traps, but we have better options that don't give your opponent free shit. Don't. Give your opponent free crap! Back in the day, we didn't have as many options, so this card was okay. Nowadays, it's it's wave and power creep by things like Solemn Judgment. Life points don't matter, especially when you can negate like everything in the game. Just do that. It's better and you'll win. Number nine, different dimension capsule. Oh no, they've changed my pyramid into a cube. Khufu to pyramid fleet. They've discovered our weakness. Different Dimension Capsule is a normal spell card that says you can banish one card from your deck face down. During the end of your second standby phase after activating this card, add that card from your banish pile to your hand. This card must remain face up on the field after you activate it until you resolve it and get that card. Why is this card bad? Well, it's twofold. I know it's classic. I know you remember it. I know you want to put it in there, but don't. First of all, it's too slow. You're getting this card like in three turns. That's that's really wait. You've lost by this point if you're relying on this to get you something you absolutely need. Not only that, it banishes it face down, which is uh, very difficult to get like early by cheesing it with another card effect, and it must remain on the field until you get it naturally. So if your opponent blows this stupid thing up, your card is now just stuck banished. If you if you want, you could play these. Play, play, uh, play Goldsark. Uh, it doesn't stay on a field. Granted, Goldsark's like at one, I think, in Master Duels. Still. Play a different one. Number eight, Magic Cylinders. Ah, the classic scrub card. Now you might be thinking, but Dave, it won me a game when I was like 10. Yeah, I, I'm sure it did. Uh, I'm sure that normal level four beater you drew and hit your opponent with it also has won you a game like once. Just because the card was the card you needed in a very specific scenario doesn't make the card good. It just means you were in a weird specific scenario where you needed a weird specific effect where another effect might have actually been better and not led you to be in that scenario in the first place. Battle traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! have a problem in that they are just too slow. Trap cards in general 
tend to be too slow because they need to get set before they can do anything and your opponent has like your end phase as well as the start of their next turn and things to try to figure out how to deal with those craps. Imagine now you've played a battle trap which can't do anything until your opponent's battle phase. Meaning your opponent has an entire main phase to pop your back row and you can't do anything about it because it's just stuck sitting there waiting for your opponent to declare an attack. And not only that, Magic Cylinders doesn't actually do anything. Your opponent declares an attack, you negate the attack, and then you hit him for some burn damage equal to their attack power. It doesn't deal with the monster your opponent has played. Now, is it funny if your opponent hits you with a big giant beat stick and ends up killing themselves? <laughs> Absolutely. It is just not a strategy you can reliably count on. And if you think that's bad, we also have Magical Cylinders. Magical Cylinders is a trap card that lets you set one magic cylinder from your deck to the field. If set from the deck, that card can be activated during this turn. So you can like use it and then set the card and then use it so this turn too, so you don't have to wait even longer to use your trap card. Okay, cool. And when you activate Magic Cylinder, you can banish Magical Cylinders from your graveyard to double the damage dealt. Okay, again, that might win you a duel here or there. It's a, it's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. Oh, it's a lot of damage! The issue is, battle traps are most effective when your opponent doesn't know you have them. You can't just be like, I activate my battle trap, and then do some serious damage to your opponent's board if they if they know it's if they know it's there. They're just gonna blow it up. And Magical Cylinders is telegraphing to your opponent that you have Magic Cylinder on board. If you are gonna telegraph to your opponent what you're doing, play something like Trap Trick. That way you can get any trap card and you can get a trap card that's actually useful, so that it doesn't matter whether your opponent knows it's there or not, they can't do much about it. Number seven, Poison the Old Man. Quick play spell card. Activate one of the following effects. Either gain 1200 life points or burn your opponent for 800 life points. This thing is a quick play spell card that also allows you to gain some life points if you choose to do that instead, making it automatically more versatile in every way than like something like Ukazi or Sparks. And you know what cards are bad? Uh, Okazi and Sparks. So, this thing must be great, right? No, it's just less bad. Why? First of all, we can go back to our little discussion about card advantage. When you are playing a game of Yu-Gi-Oh, a good way to judge whether or not you are going to win the duel or not is to assume that every one card you have deals with every one card your opponent has. So if your opponent has more cards than you, they have more resources and therefore are more likely to do something uh, game-winning on their turn. So you playing a burn card that just makes you lose a card, does 800 damage to your opponent, that's not accomplishing anything, you're just wasting a resource that could have been any other card in the game and probably would have served you better in this scenario. Burn damage in Yu-Gi-Oh is, is a bit of a is a bit of a uh, double-edged sword. It is good when it is good and it is awful when it is awful. If you're in like a match in real Yu-Gi-Oh and it's going into time, uh, some burn damage can be really clutch. Or if you're playing a dedicated burn strategy, you need to obviously include cards that further that win condition. This card seems to get played in just any random deck. I'm an old school Yugi boomer who comes back to the game and remembers that this card won me a card game on the playground so I stick it in my deck that otherwise doesn't utilize burn in any way and I wonder why this card is always just a, a, a lost resource. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. If you're looking to put in some situational burn damage, consider something like Gaga Ga Cowboy. If you can put two level four monsters on board, you can special summon this thing from your extra deck for free, and if you put it in defense mode, you can do 800 burn damage to your opponent. And because it is in your extra deck and you can make it at will, you can just grab him when you need him. He's right there. And then you know what? That's not, and he's, he doesn't even see play anymore. Because, but if you must, if you must, play Cowboy. All right, here we go. Number six is Shard of Greed. More like Shard of Greed. <laughs> what do? This continuous spell card says every time you draw a card for your normal draw in your draw phase, you know, the card you start every turn with, you place a greed counter on this thing. And then when this thing has two or more greed counters on it, you can you can uh, send it to the graveyard to draw two cards. So in normal gameplay, unless you're using some sort of weird cheesy effect, uh, it'll take you like two turns uh, or more to get the greed counters necessary for this thing to work. A big problem is that you don't get a greed counter the turn you play it. You gotta wait till next turn. So just like uh, your, your canopic jar card, different dimension capsule. It's a spell you need to wait to use. It, it, it It's counterintuitive to what a spell card does. Granted, in a slower format back in the day, this was a decent draw option. Futures now, old man. 
we have better draw cards and you don't even have to be too crazy to figure out which ones are the good ones. Just type in pot in your little search engine in your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels and you can pick one that is suitable for your deck that does a thing that doesn't inhibit the way your deck functions. Maybe your deck does not really draw any other times and it plays some superfluous crap in its extra deck. Play Pot of Extravagance. Maybe you don't really special summon too much. Play Pot of Duality. You have options that get you cards now instead of cards later when you've already lost the game. Number five, Supply Squad. It's the same argument. This continuous spell says once per turn when one of your guys is destroyed by any means, you draw a card. The biggest problem is the thing is a soft once per turn. Granted, it's at least not a hard once per turn, so multiple copies will go off. Just like Shard of Greed, draw cards don't ever really work too well if one of two things are happening. Either A, it just takes too long to use, like Shard of Greed, so you're, you're not using your draw card to help fix a hand or set up your board. Getting to them a few turns later doesn't help. And Supply Squad not only takes too long for you to use, you play it and nothing happens immediately unless you do something else. If you want to activate this thing at will, it requires you to like blow up your own guy. And if you can do that, like if your deck blows its own guys up like scraps or something and does it at will, newsflash, your deck's functioning and you didn't need, you didn't need this card to go off. Uh, your deck's already working. Uh, I like the card myself, but it really only works when your deck's already working. And that's not why you want draw in your deck. Number four, any mirror force. Instead of explaining to you why mirror force is not good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm just going to include this footage of a duel I played against Blue Eyes White Dragon simply because it, it, it's just a funny replay. A few moments later. Toe too strong. Speaking of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. Ah, yes, my old nemesis. Where's Chaos Max Dragon? On a list of scrub cards. That's where he is. Emotional damage! Chaos Max Dragon is okay. In the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you cannot both play something that is just okay and complain about losing. You can't have it both ways. Either play a good deck or be okay with not getting them all the time. Like I am, I play shit and I lose half the time and that's okay. But competitive decks are competitive because they are better than everything else. So if you aren't gonna play the good stuff, you're gonna only play the okay stuff. You gotta be okay with it being okay. Okay. Chaos Max Dragon is just okay. He's a ritual monster, which is already like the worst special summon we have in the game. It, it requires too much resources for those decks to be good. They need to essentially break the entire rules of the game and not even be rituals anymore like Dryton are. Hell, Megaliths are okay because they just omit having a ritual spell, which is not a ritual monster anymore. So that's already clunky. But at least the thing has 4,000 attack and cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card crap. And if it attacks a defense position monster, you do double piercing damage, which is... Uh, Kind of, I think it's unique to this card, so that's at least fun. Big knobber and untargetable while sounding really good to somebody who doesn't know how to play the game. You end up just playing this weird, like, defend the castle strategy. And if your opponent does manage to kill the damn thing, you'll never financially recover from this. <laughs> we just have very diverse extra decks nowadays. Your opponent probably has a way of getting rid of this thing. I think why this ends up being so high in the list is simply because it's a Blue Eyes White Dragon card. So like people who aren't familiar with the game too much or just playing casually like the Blue Eyes White Dragon because uh, it's a famous card. So they're inclined to play this thing. We see Blue Eyes White Dragon a lot and often that deck is not very successful. Number two, Soul Absorption. Soul Absorption could also just be any do-nothing card. I made a list of those at some point. Uh, I'll have Ryan throw a card up here or wherever it goes. Where in the game of Yu-Gi-Mans, if you want your card advantage to not be empty advantage, it's really nice if your cards do something when you activate them. If Soul Absorption has the problem of when you play it to the field, literally nothing happens. You have to do something else, like your Supply Squad, for something to happen. Something like Metaphys can play this card and get a butt ton of life points, 
but it doesn't really help them win. It doesn't forward their game state. It doesn't make the deck go. It's just a funny thing that happens along with the side of the deck actually functioning. In before Jason comments that I, I lost to his metaphysics because of this card once. I misplayed and let it go too long. He ended up with like 40,000 life points and I, I let it go too long. That was my mistake. He didn't win. I lost. I scooped. I just was like, all right, fine. Game two. This is not worth my time anymore. We're wasting time in the round. That doesn't make soul absorption good. That just makes me bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> not supposed to let it get that far. All right, the next honorable we'll mention uh, kind of goes with your cast, Max Dragon. It's the god cards. You could even say Blue Eyes, White Dragon in general, or Dark Magician, or Red Eyes, Black. Um, they're all bad. Blue Eyes is okay. Dark Magician's okay. The god cards are practically unplayable. They're not good. They're hard to play, and they don't do anything. The best one you play is Sphere Mode, and you're kind of using it improperly. You're not meant. You're not using it to. To, to say the chant and get the get the raw on your side of the board and, and be Merrick for a duel. No, you're you're using it to tribute three of your opponent's crap. You're you're misusing the card. Although they're still pretty hype when you summon them. We're all still children at heart. Sorry, buddy. All right, number one. What's the scrubbiest card in Yu-Gi-Oh that you might see in like bronze in Master Duels? I don't know, Magical Mallet. Magical Mallet. What do? Shuffle any number of cards from your hand into your deck and then draw that many cards. Why is this card bad? This fixes bad hands. Number one, don't play cards that mitigate a bad scenario. You should not assume your deck is losing and then play cards to help it not lose. That's a uh, bad deck design. Bolster your deck's win con. Don't mitigate its crappy brickiness. That's just a problem with the deck. You can only do so much, kid. Also, magic mail to minus one. You use the card, you shuffle other cards to your deck, and then you draw cards, except for the magical mallet. So you just lost a card for a chance to get something that'll actually let you do a thing. It's just another chance to flip the coin. It's, you're just pulling the lever again one more time. Obviously this card does have a function like any other card. So when I say scrub card, I, I, I kind of mean uh, using these in decks that don't really revolve around a cheesy strategy that utilizes these cards properly. It's just, I'm throwing them in my deck because I remember they exist. Magical Mallet uh, is too old school and it's not a real draw card. And its best function is in like an Exodia deep draw. So its best function is in a cheese deck and not a real strategy. We have so many good pot cards and in master duels they're all super rare so uh, you don't even have to worry about like gatekeeping price tags on ebay or whatever on tcg player or something which is coincidentally our sponsor for the video uh if you if you want to play real Yu-Gi-Oh, go check them out use my link buy some cards go play with your friends but yeah magical mallet's gonna give you problems it doesn't get you any more cards you're actually losing cards to use it this thing could have been anything else and a mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh ain't good if you have to use a card to do it Mulligans are good in other games because you just get them for free. You can just do it. And what if you draw this in like a later turn? It's really only useful turn one. If you top deck this thing, turn five, it's dead as hell. If you're worried about getting to the cards you need for your deck to work, play a search card. Play a card that gets you literally to the one card you need to start playing. And if that doesn't exist, well, I don't know. <laughs> don't play that deck. Magical Mallet ain't gonna fix it. All right, guys, I hope this video has been a little bit educational. For those people trying to get back into the game now that we got a new fancy uh, uh, way to play the game out on app stores everywhere and also don't want to make an ass of themselves or if i hope you enjoyed it if you were a player that played a long time and want to laugh at those people who are making an ass of themselves either way it's it's fine and remember guys if you don't troll the meta who will i need to go build something from an extreme <laughs>